Good morning to all of you. Welcome to our service this morning. We're just a little bit late because we don't have a pastor yet. <laughs> and if you can see, I'm sweating. <laughs> There's a good reason. Uh, we've had communication with Dr. Ellens, and um, we quite sure he knows about it. But things do change. So we're going to get started. And uh, if you want to say we're going to wing it, I guess that's right. But uh, we, have a, we do have a plan B. And um, Art said he had something in his pocket. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> I don't think he knows either. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to worship. And that's what we're here to do. God calls us to worship. And um, worship can be many things. It's personal. It's a group thing. We're here as a congregation. We're going to worship in our songs. We're going to worship in our prayer and our music. So let's do that. And we're glad that you're here. Uh, the call to worship is on the screen. So let's begin with that. O magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. And let us...
Brothers and sisters in Christ our Lord, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through Jesus Christ our living and reigning Savior, and through the pouring of His Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. As God's people, we come here knowing that we need Christ's forgiveness. And so as we think about that now, I think it's good that we reflect, reflect on this past week. And you know, as we do that, I know in my life, I can see so many shortcomings, but we know that God forgives, but we need to ask his forgiveness first. So let's do that now in a prayer confession, shall we? Gracious God, we bow before you. And it's good for us, Lord, to reflect, knowing that we can bow before you as our God. A God who sees our sins and it must sadden you greatly when you see us fall short. And Lord, we know that then because of your son's death on the cross, we don't have to stay on our knees. We can confess our sins. And then we know, Lord, that your tears of sorrow turn to tears of joy because of your son. And we thank you. We ask your forgiveness. And we know, Lord, that you forgive us. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The assurance of pardon then comes to us, to all who turn from sin to sorrow, to all who turn to God in hope. This is God's word of grace. We are accepted. We are forgiven. We are loved. This gift we have from God. Thanks be to God. It's a song of dedication then. Let us sing, Just As I Am. <clears throat>
Well, I'll be praying for me and you. <laughs> Please join me in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning. We pray that you'll be with us. May our worship be to your honor and glory. We pray that you'll be with Pastor Ellens. May nothing that is harmful have happened to him on his way here. And we pray that you'll be with us in our worship. Be with me as I lead us in a short meditation. And we pray too that you'll be with those around the world. There are a lot of people that are worshiping right now and hoping that rebels don't come or police don't come. We thank you for a country where we can worship in peace, where we do not have to worry. And we pray that you'll be with our country too. May you guide it and be with us now. May your word speak to us this morning. For Jesus' sake, amen. If you could uh, get out your Bibles and get the book of Job open to chapter 40. Job chapter 40. As you can guess, I didn't pick the sermon title, but we could probably stick with it. We're just going to use some different passages. So, who told you? The Lord said to Job, starting with verse 1, sorry. The Lord said to Job, will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. And then Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Brace yourself like a man. I will answer you. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's, and can, you voice, can your voice thunder like his? Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor, and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at all who are proud, and bring them low. Look at all who are proud, and humble them. Crush the wicked where they stand. Bury them all in the dust together. Shroud their faces in the grave. Then I myself will admit to you that you, that your own right hand can save you. And we'll stop reading there. Just for a little review, I think you all remember the book of Job. Job starts out with a lot of kids, a lot of wealth, a lot of camels, and a lot of horses. And I kind of like this passage. I talk about it uh, in a couple of my classes at Dort too, because then something kind of strange happens. The devil comes to the Lord, it says, and says, well, no wonder Job loves you. All he has is good stuff. It's got tons of it. But you take that all away, and then what's going to happen? And so as the story goes, the Lord does take all that away. Pretty soon, Job has nothing left but his wife, a couple motley friends, and one half-smart young guy. And they're sitting around in the dust, and they're complaining a lot. And this goes on quite a while, and he doesn't really get that good of advice. And now if we think back over that scenario, it's something I'll end with. It's kind of hard to imagine that conversation that resulted in Job losing all his possessions. That's something I can't wrap my head around and I'm not sure even some of the brightest and best in this sanctuary can. It's one of those mysteries that we really can't explain. So that's one thing I, I want to leave you with, just like God addressed Job in chapter 40. There are things that God does that he knows, 
and that the Bible describes that I don't think a lifetime of study will ever explain. So Job wanders along and only the youngest guy gives him a little advice and says, Job, there's something in this. Uh, God's, God's not just bringing this on to make you miserable. But Job, he kind of goes with the old guys and he finally addresses God just in the passage before we read. And he says, why is this happening? What's up? What's going on? And then we just heard God's response. And God goes on for quite a while after this and questions Job. Are you there when the mountain goats give birth? Do you call out the thunder and lightning? Do you call out the rain? Job, answer me. Job, he doesn't have a whole lot to say. And God goes on some more. And finally, about five chapters later, God says, or Job says to God, yep, I didn't know what I was saying. I didn't know what I was doing. You are God and I am man. And I'm going to be quiet. And I think in this day and age there's a strong message there. We like to think we're in control. We like to have a God that's about our size, a little bit bigger, who can bail us out on occasion. But we really have a lot of trouble with a God we can't understand. And who does things that we don't like being done to us. And I look around this congregation and been here almost as long as most of you. And I see some real struggles in families. I see some things we don't even know the most of us that went on. And it's not really answerable. I don't think there is an answer to that kind of experience that many of us have had. But I also then always talk to my students about the fact that, you know, just sit back, get a little grumpy, Pray to the Lord, but then what are your alternatives? You gotta think hard about that. You gonna stick by yourself? Are you the person you're gonna put your trust in? Well, if you think like I do very long about that, that gets kind of gloomy. There's no whole lot of hope there. So you could pick a uh, you know, another idol, but, you know, God has quite a bit in the Bible to say about things we make. They're probably dumber than we are, and we just gave up on ourselves, so that doesn't leave you going too far. Uh, I always tell students right before an exam, and in this case, you know, magic, miracles, that usually isn't the way it works. God can do them, but if you don't study and you pray for a miracle, uh, I don't know that's going to happen. Uh, so that isn't a real good solution either. So now we're, well, this could have maybe just all evolved. You know, it could have just started happening. But if you want to read some science books or talk to Brother Mahaffey someday, what you'll find out is the odds that all this just happened are, boy, that's almost more than magic. That's just like not not really a real option. And so, as we discuss this, and I hope as you think about it, I'm more comforted than I am concerned that I can't explain my God. I can't understand a whole lot of things, just like Job couldn't. But if I could, I'd have a mighty small God. And I don't think that's what we want. I think what we want is a God that is a whole lot bigger than us. And we got to have faith in that. But I think as we just wandered through some options, what else is better to put our faith in? I don't come up with it. I'm pretty comfortable having faith in a God that I can't understand. That when he made predictions throughout the whole Bible and his son came, and he didn't look like much, and he died on the cross, and then he rose again. If you think back to all the stuff that was going on in the earth at that time, 
And you say to yourself, self, what's left now? A few crumbling aqueducts, an old coliseum, a couple of temples in Athens that they're trying to save. But the Christian church is everywhere. It's all over. And it seems to thrive in adversity. If you hadn't noticed, you just got a thing in your box from Reverend Mapindi, who's in Africa as we speak. And the church is growing there in the roughest places. We keep in touch with Laos. We keep in touch with Mexico. It defies everything that makes sense to the world. And I kind of like that. I kind of like being in a spot where I can say, oh yeah, you're so smart. What's happened to all that stuff? And God keeps rolling along. And God keeps leading us when we don't know what, quite where we're going to go. And I encourage you to keep a really big God, one that you can't understand. Now, I'm not against studying. I hope to keep my job yet for a couple of years. Not saying that, but I think keep a God that you can't explain. Keep a God that you believe in, but you need some faith to believe in. And that's a much sweeter spot for me than something I can make or some body of knowledge that people say, this is the answer today. Now, don't forget how Job ends. Vern doesn't have to bring me a drink. <laughs> Preaching harder at work than I thought, Dave. Uh, okay, uh, anyway, we'll get back at this. Uh, so it ends, and what, is, what happens? Job has more wealth, he has more kids, he has a stronger faith than he ever had before. And I know from looking around this sanctuary also that some of the things some of you and us have been through they don't weaken your faith. The world might say, well, how did you survive that? How did that happen? But the Lord gives us what we need. He blesses us. His spirit is here every day. And I think if we keep those kinds of things in mind, we'll realize we're glad we have a big God, a God we can't understand. And we are wise to put our faith in him. We are wise to pray for his spirit's blessing on us. And that's kind of why I like this passage in Job. Because when I get done reading it, I don't understand it all. But I certainly know that that's the God I'm going to stick with. Because there's no good alternative to me. I don't think I'll say amen because I'm not sure it deserves it. But let's pray together. Lord, we come to you this morning. We thank you for the message that you send us in your Bible about so many people like Job that put their trust in you and who weren't perfect, who did a lot of dumb things, who had to ask for forgiveness just like we do just about every day. And we pray that you'll be with us now through the rest of our worship, but through our life as the fun spots arrive, as the difficult times arrive. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with us and help us to keep our faith. And we know that you promise that once we accept you, that we believe in your son, that you won't let us go, even if we feel like you did. And help us to cling to that, to believe in you, and to live our lives to your honor and glory. And when we fail, forgive us. For Jesus' sake, amen. I think we're going to sing again. <coughs>
Before we go in uh, congregational prayer, um, yesterday, I think it was, we received an email uh, concerning uh, Pete Coy, but, uh, and he was uh, in a serious condition, but he did pass away. And so we want to extend our sympathy to Almer, his brother, and to Julia Kreinbrink, uh, sister-in-law, in Peter's death. Let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Gracious God, we bow to you. You are God. You are the creator. You are all-knowing, everywhere present, all-powerful. There is no other God. And Lord, we acknowledge that today as a congregation again. We know that You want your people to bow before you in prayer. And that heaven rejoices when your people spend time in prayer and in your word. And so, Lord, we do that as a congregation. Lord, help us to do that, too, in our daily lives. It's so hard. We're busy. We've got things to do, places to go. And it's just so hard to spend just a few minutes every day in your word and in prayer. But we know, Lord, we don't have to have a set time. We can do it any time. We can come to you in prayer while we're riding the tractor. We can come to you in prayer as we walk down the bike path. We can come to you in prayer before we take a test. And we know that you are always there. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we ask that you will certainly bring comfort now to the Coy family. And we ask that you will surround that family with your love. We pray, too, for Dwayne and Shelley and the passing of Dwayne's mom. We know that she was well in her years. And she lived a life of service and love to you. And we're just thankful for the example that she has set for her family and for others. And Lord, we pray for others, too, who have recently lost loved ones. Continue to comfort. Give your grace. Lord, we have reason to celebrate, too. We celebrate the gift of new life to Ryan and Liz, to Groat. We thank you for a healthy baby. Bless these parents now as they bring up this child. And we look forward to this child's baptism in a few weeks. Lord, we celebrate with Faye today. We celebrate with her her 80th birthday. And Lord, we just thank you for the many years you have given her, but also for the, the fact that she could continue to serve you, that she could be part of Faith Church and serve us here. Bless her. Continue to provide for her. Lord, we thank you too for the increased attendance of young people, young adults at Sulan Unity. This is exciting to see growth, especially in the young people there. And Lord, we just pray that you will continue to bless Gayo and Boon Joon as they minister there. Sometimes it's really hard, difficult. We pray for those in our church too that go there every Sunday to help with the Sunday school, the church school. And Lord, may that be, bless that ministry too. We thank you for the partner, the ship that we can have with that church. Lord, we have other needs too. Colin Holstein needs your care this week. Colin will go in for surgery Friday, extensive surgery to correct his feet. And Lord, be with that little boy. And we know that the uh, it's going to be tough after the surgery, too. 
where he'll have his feet in casts for a number of weeks. And that's hard for a little boy to not be active. So bless him. We pray that the surgery may be successful. Be with Chris and Jana too as parents. Lord, we pray for others who are still healing from broken bones. Bob, Florence, Judy, we thank you that things are going well. And they're healing, but be with them. We have others in our midst, Lord, that uh, continue to receive cancer treatments. We thank you that uh, the treatments are going well for Gert. Continue to be with her. Lord, we have a busy week this week at Faith. And we thank you, Lord, that there are many opportunities for us to continue to grow in our faith not just on Sunday. So we ask your blessing on all of the Bible study groups that are meeting this week. Bless the safe family gathering this afternoon. Lord, we thank you for the two placements, the successful placements that we have been able to have and we just pray for, for more. We have families that are ready and we Lord, Lord we pray that we can offer that service to our community. Lord, we pray for the initial meeting, prayer ministry meeting tomorrow night, led by Pastor Dave. Lord, prayer is, is so vital in our lives. And so we ask that you will bless that meeting as we look at ways that we can extend our prayer ministry here at Faith. Bless that meeting. Lord, Wednesday night, will you bless the young people and the elders as we sit together and have roundtable discussions with them about serving you and what it means to be a Christian. Our young people, Lord, have many dangers. We just were reminded of that again yesterday of these young people in Sioux City who experimented with these synthetic drugs and without knowing how dangerous they are. And one instantly was taken away. Lord, we just pray that you will help us as adults to set good examples and to mentor and to be there for our young people and our children. So we ask your blessing on our meeting Wednesday night. Continue to bless Chad as he directs that ministry. We thank you, Father, for his gifts and his talents. Be with all our staff, Lord, as they serve us from day to day, Glenda, Jackie, Dorinda, Dave. And Lord, again, we pray for the search committee we uh, know, Lord, there's lots of uh, profiles that are being followed up on right now. And, and we know, Lord, uh, we, we need your patience. It, it takes a long time, it seems, to call a pastor nowadays. And so we just pray that you will bless the search committee as they continue to do their work. And in that light, Lord, we pray for our sister church down the road today, First Christian Reformed Church, and for Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark has received the call to another church, and Lord, we, we pray you will bless him now as he has to make that decision too. Guide him, Lord, and direct him. And so, Lord, we pray that you will bless this day as we continue to worship. Bless our families as we get together. And bring us back tonight, Lord. We look forward to the professions of faith that we're three young men are going to make. And Lord, they need us to be here to support that tonight. So may we fill this church again tonight as we worship you again. We pray this then in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Our offerings will now be received. <clears throat>
We began this morning by talking about the need for confession and the fact that uh, we don't always do so good in our daily lives. So what is the guide for our lives? What is the guide for this coming week? Well, Deuteronomy 5 tells us that. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth below or in the waters. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. When I read that, that, that strikes me, that to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to thousand, a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. As the Lord your God has commanded you, six days you shall labor and work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son, daughter, or manservant or maidservant, nor your ox or donkey or any animals or any aliens, so that your maidservants and manservants and maidservants may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor and you should not covet. All of these commandments are there for us to follow. That's our guide for this coming week. Let's stand then and sing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
our great God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Adam and Eve, who graciously took the people out of Adam and Eve out of the garden so that they would not continue to sin, this awesome God, through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, says to us as we part and go into a new week, may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace, now and at all times. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.